Hola, welcome to Spanish with Profe. Today I'm going to be uh, reading two poems with, for you. Uh, this summer I've been reading a lot and I thought it would be nice to talk and share some of the stuff I've been doing. This is Margarita Engel, a Cuban American writer. Her mom was born in Cuba and her dad is from the US. And the memoir is called Enchanted Air, Two Cultures, Two Wings, a memoir. How's your summer going? I hope it's going well. Today, uh, we had rain this morning and it was some thunder too. One of my dogs doesn't like the thunder. So he was scared this morning. So I'll start with quiet times. This is when she goes, Margarita goes to um, Cuba to visit some of the relatives with her mom. This is before um, 1959, before the Cuban Revolution. Because back then, like, you could travel back and forth between the U.S. and Cuba. But then after that, uh, the embargo was established. And um, in 2015, they were going to lift them up uh, so people can travel back and forth. I was there in 2014 in, in Cuba. As a professor, I went to a conference, so I had to get some special documents to travel there. So let's begin. Quiet times. I feel like I am home. Even though this peaceful town isn't my own. Everything is just as I remember. From before the war. Palm trees and bell towers rise. About rows of houses. Each wall painted its own shade of food hue. Guava pink, lime green, pineapple yellow. If you ever travel to any country in Latin America, you'll see um, colorful houses, tropics. A whole town just as quiet and colorful as a garden. So a town that is quiet, but full of color, that looks like a garden. Beautiful description and imagery. Blue doves flutter for nest. On the red tile roof, horsemen lead goats along cobblestone lanes. That's one of the nice features if you, whenever you travel to a Spanish speaking country, that you'll find a lot of places that have cobblestone lanes. I saw that in Cuba and also in Puerto Rico when I was there. I was in Puerto Rico in 2012 and then again in 2016. Cobblestones. We stay in a house where I don't remember all the names of mommy's relatives, but I do recall the comfort of cool tile floors on bare feet. Um, another thing is that a cultural thing is that um, in Spain and countries in Latin America, people just open windows when it's hot. It's not very common to have AC at home. You just open windows and they have um, tile floors to cool the house. So that's interesting. On bare feet. That's the key, bare feet. P.S. Descalzos. Um, 
in my culture, uh, it is very important to wear shoes, especially for my grandma and for my mom. They always say, put your shoes on. Ponte los zapatos, ponte los zapatos. Because they say that uh, if you're walking in bare, uh, your bare feet, you can pick up stuff from the ground. You can get sick. Te puedes enfermar. So anyway, so immediately, all folks start scolding me for ignoring the luxury of shoes. Mommy explained that in Cuba, there are worms that can creep in through the soles of your feet and then eat their way up to your heart. Uh-oh. So you hear stories like this. The, so like she says, that everybody say, put on your shoes, put on your shoes, because anything can curl up to your feet and get up to your heart. You can get sick. How can any place so peaceful be so dangerous? And that's the end of this poem. I like this poem because it reminds me of home and growing up. And recently in June, I went to visit my grandma in California. And she said, put on your shoes. So I had to put on my shoes. But at least put socks on to walk around the house. That's what she said. Um, and then one of my friends was um, Peace Corp, and he went to uh, Paraguay. And the people in Paraguay were telling him, put on, don't ever walk without shoes. You need to always wear your shoes. And I think that's a thing that happens everywhere, that you have to put on shoes. It's a culture thing. And then I was, um, after I read this poem, I went, you know, like I walked my dogs, uh, on a daily basis. And then I was walking my dogs. And then I see this lady uh, walking to her mailbox to pick up her mail. And she was not wearing shoes. She was an older woman. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's a big difference. Because um, you wouldn't see. <laughs> uh, I have walked outside my house without shoes. Because that's, that's how I am. But uh, my mom will be would be upset at my grandma if they see me walking outside the house with no shoes because even inside the house you have to wear shoes which uh it's quite interesting because in sweden because of the snow and everything people are always it's a cultural thing they always take the shoes off before they enter a house and i have some canadian friends too that have told me the same thing too excuse me that you uh, remove your shoes before you come into the house so that's quite something else. The next poem that we'll be reading today is um, Lost in Translation. And this one is quite interesting. I'll read it and then I'll tell you a little bit more about it. One day, we walk along the cobblestones to visit a sick relative who is so old that I am surprised by her strength. As she, as she pinches my arm and sighs, Ay, que gordita! Ha, chubby. So uh, one of the things in the Latino culture, especially your grandparents, uh, will always call out on you. Like, you say, hey, hey, wow, you have gained weight. Or wow, you look so skinny. What's going on? And they're always going to point out something. They're always going to bring out something to your attention because like, they're like, they're like that. Like, uh, so they say, oh, wow, you need to do something. You have gained so much weight. Or, wow, you need to start eating. Why are you so skinny? They always uh, say things just like that. There are no filters. So, so that's what she says. Ay, que gordita, hot chubby. I know that I'm tiny, sorry, I know that I am a tiny bit pudgy, but being called fatty by a grown-up makes me cry so long and so hard that all mommy's efforts to explain are useless. I don't care if plump is a compliment in Cuba. Cultural differences and how you approach and treat people with filters or no filters. 
So you being real or fake? However you want to take this. I cannot stand the sight of this old, skinny, sick woman who envies anyone healthy enough to gain weight. Why can't not an insult contain only one meaning so that I can hate her even if she might be dying? That's the end of that poem. So, um... So in the Latino culture, um, especially your grandparents, your parents, and even other relatives, I think like they will point out things, uh, uh, you know, like the way you look, how you dress, because even nicknames are based on the way you look. So if you're like light skin, they will call you um, by whatever. Uh, regional word they have in that country. And if you're uh, dark skin, then they'll call you by whatever. Uh, there's one word and that they use. And it's not used as an insult. Uh, it's a cultural differences. And then uh, if you're short, they'll use a word too for that. And if you're tall, they're going to use another adjective for that to describe you. And if you wear glasses, they'll use another adjective to describe you, too. So it's quite interesting. The attributes that your family gives to you based on how you look. Does your family ever embarrass you? Uh, family members tend to do that. And that's how sometimes they show love. So leave your comments below. Tell me uh, what do you think about these two poems by Margarita Engel, Enchanted Air. And tell me, what are you reading this summer? Do you enjoy reading? ¿Te gusta leer? ¿Qué tipo de lecturas te gustan? ¿Qué género literario prefieres? Bueno, uh, espero recibir comentarios y hasta pronto. Chao, nos vemos. Smash the like button.